Thanks, I hate it. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I am your humble narrator, and welcome back to Bundle Banter. We are looking at the humble choice for April 2020, and I gotta be honest with you folks, the pickings are pretty slim this month. Dang, I usually try to be positive and be like, oh, it's not so bad, it's only 12 bucks, but... I don't know, man. It's kind of hard to justify the $12 this month, if you want me to be completely honest. But, um, we'll have a look at it. We'll see what we got. And here are the games. We've got Hitman 2, Grizz, This is Police 2, Opus Magnum, Molex Sintes, Raiden 5, Driftland, Turok 2, Seeds of Evil, Truberbrook, The Bard's Tale Director's Cut, Shopkeep 2, and Capitalism 2. Lots of 2s. Many part 2s, which you'd think would be a good thing. Oh, they improved on the first one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Luckily, that is kind of the case for Hitman 2. It is a stealthy assassination simulator, as if you didn't know, on a variety of gigantic maps. It looks great. It runs amazing. If you enjoy this type of game, there's really not a whole lot to complain about. It does have like a huge chunk of DLC that isn't included and I'm sure that will trouble some people. But the game is completely playable and extremely fun even without all of the expensive bells and whistles. This game alone almost makes the bundle worth it to me. Almost. Grizz. An artsy fartsy kind of atmospheric platformer that managed to snag multiple awards. The art and the sound work is really quite superb, but to me it feels like one of those games that's trying too hard to push gaming forward as an art form. <laughs> it touches on grief and depression, which is fine, but I've seen games like that before, and to be honest, I don't really give a fuck. The main concern that I have is, does it feel fun to play? And Grizz managed to create a smooth and fun experience. Although it doesn't last very long, clocking in at about 3-4 to four hours, the controls are very smooth and it does feel nice to play once you get past the first little bit that is kind of more like an art gallery than a game. But once you get into the actual game, the, the meat of it is pretty good. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't feel like a game that I really would want to revisit at any time, except for maybe showing friends and family. This is the police too! Turn-based combat thrown into a blender with a strategy simulation and given a coat of police-colored paint. I enjoyed the first installment, and the second was on my wish list, so I'm happy to see it, though I realize that it won't be a fit for everyone. This is a game that sort of wears out its welcome, and it's probably best played in small chunks. It's frustrating when you have a job to do, but your policemen won't cooperate with each other for one reason or another. Like, this one doesn't want to work with women, and the other one doesn't like certain clothes or stats, and it can feel like a real chore, but something keeps drawing me back into it. I think that something is called masochism. It does have a decent storyline and some XCOM-like gameplay, and all those XCOM players out there know exactly what sort of masochism I'm talking about. <laughs> Opus Magnum. Jeez, man. I think I've completed my Zaktronics collection entirely via Humble Choice. That's great if you like this kind of puzzle. Opus Magnum is the simplest of Zaktronics big brain programming titles, and I would indeed consider this his magnum opus. It has a much lower barrier to entry, and almost anyone can sit down with this game and start having fun, which is not necessarily the case for many other titles from this developer. It's easy to complete the puzzles, but the true pain comes from optimization. There's always someone out there that did the same thing you did, but with less parts or with less moves. And if you really feel like punishing yourself, you're welcome to try and beat their score. Molex Sintes. Wow. Another Zaktronic title. Humble Choice plus Zaktronic. <laughs> Best friends for life. Okay, Humble. Okay. This one is extremely similar to Opus Magnum. You play as a Romanian pharmacist who is synthesizing pharmaceuticals in his apartment. The story actually doesn't matter all that much. You'll mostly be fiddling with chemical reactions by shoving hydrogen molecules into things. It's only slightly more difficult than Opus, which I can handle. When we get to TIS-100 or Shenzhen levels of hard, then you can probably count me out. 
But as it stands, this is a neat little puzzler with a lo-fi feel, and it lets you feel like a mad scientist without the risk of blowing yourself up. I like it. Raiden 5, Director's Cut. Well, now we are descending into the part of the list where I will probably be throwing some shade. Raiden was a decent title that probably should have been left as a nostalgic relic. The graphical upgrades here are okay. Not 2017 level, but a definite upgrade from the ancient style of the original that I'm used to. But while the models were improved, they've taken it upon themselves to just completely fuck the UI. Thanks, I hate it. They also shoehorned in a story mode that goes on for far too long. Because, you know, that's what I boot up a shoot 'em up for. Rich fucking lore. <laughs> three ships, three weapons. There's like this weird cheer system that's been implemented and it relies on other players online, so it'll probably become defunct at some point. I guess it works for what it is, but personally, I'd boot up the original again before sitting down with this. Driftland, the magic revival. Oh wow, Dayton, you love wizards. This game will surely please, right? Wrong, loyal viewer. Oh so wrong. RTS isn't my strong suit, first of all but I could learn to enjoy it based on the aesthetic. Unfortunately, this game is severely lacking in that department. Remember in Warcraft 3, or Majesty, and you click a unit and they'd have a little phrase that showcased some of their personality? Well, in Driftland, they just fucking grunt at you. Like, okay dude, I'm the piece of shit for actually wanting to command my units. Even the gameplay feels cluttered and awkward. Moving around floating islands is an interesting concept. It's just too bad that it was shot entirely to hell by piss poor execution. Driftland managed to be so bland and lifeless that it probably should have just been released as a mobile title. Yes, those are fighting words, and I don't take them lightly. I'm sure this game has its audience, but I sure as hell ain't it. Turok 2 Seeds of Evil! Oh, great. Another Turok to match the one I threw away last month. Is this one an improvement on the original? Absolutely. Is it worth replaying 20 years later? Not a chance in fucking hell. <laughs> the enemies are still generic. The AI hasn't seen much if any improvement. I will say that the levels don't seem as samey and horrible as the first iteration, but that isn't saying a whole lot since all they did was go through and add a few markers to help you figure out where the fuck you are. I do like some of the more inventive weapons that were added like the Razor Boomerang and the Laser Shotgun and a cerebral bore that like drills into your enemy's brains. It's super cool. But honestly, I've experienced all of it already, and there's nothing added to this game that makes me feel compelled to invest that amount of time in Turok again. Sorry. Truberbrook. You know my motto. Point and click, easy skip. <laughs> it doesn't really rhyme. The art style is pretty spiffy, but there isn't much aside from that to grab my attention here. Sure, I enjoy sci-fi as much as the next guy, but the story itself is so frustratingly generic. Player wins a sweepstakes they didn't enter. Player goes to Germany. Player has their physics notes stolen. Player needs to figure out why they were taken, by whom, and how to get them back. I'm literally snoring already. I might be showing my bias here, but quirky animations and simple puzzles don't make for a game that I want to sign up for personally. It's standard point-and-click fare. Click around until you collect an item that allows the puzzle to solve itself. I rarely, if ever, feel like I figured something out myself with these games. It's just shoving things together until something works. I dislike this genre, and Truberbrook is not about to change that. The Bard's Tale 4 Director's Cut. So, let's see. We praised five games and bashed four. Does that mean that this one will even the score? Not exactly. I am conflicted about Bard's Tale. It has the dungeon delving RPG party building that gives me a big rubbery one, but for some reason they decided to toss puzzles into the mix. Probably even more than into the mix. It's like buying a bag of planters mixed nuts and 70% of it is peanuts. Those are the puzzles. Little puzzle peanuts. And you can't throw them all on the floor or else you're, you're throwing away 70% of what you paid for. Luckily, if I'm getting the game for a buck twenty, I can kinda justify it a little more. And this isn't to say that I hate all puzzle games, because if the puzzles feel significant to the plot or the theme, that's great, I can deal with it. But the majority of the time, 
these don't. Luckily, there is an in-game option that lets you skip a lot of the puzzles, and I will definitely be utilizing it. The story and characters are a big thing in most RPGs, and here those elements are... serviceable, at best, and barebones generic at worst. I can see past that and the plethora of reported bugs and just try to enjoy the dungeons, even if the minimap is also kinda shit, but I know that for a lot of people, this will be yet another disappointing title in an already extremely weak bundle. Shopkeep 2. Oh, the garbage just keeps coming. <sighs> Online, co-op, open world, first person, resource management, RPG. Does that sound like an absolute clusterfuck? <laughs> well, don't blame me. That's what's written on the actual Steam Store page. Seriously, look. What the fuck? The original shopkeep came about through Steam Greenlight, when that was still a thing. It lacked quite a bit, but it filled an interesting niche. Then out of nowhere, the developer decided that the first game was finished, and that shopkeep required a second iteration. It really didn't. This game is largely considered abandonware, so pick it up at your own risk. It's still a bug-ridden shitfest, but perhaps you can squeeze some enjoyment out of it if you really enjoy grinding. Personally, I'd suggest this game being THE game to drop for everyone. It isn't complete trash, but the tactics of the developer are a gigantic black mark on this game's permanent record. Capitalism 2! What... what the hell? <laughs> Another 20-year-old title. Well, at least the simulation genre manages to hold itself up a bit more gracefully than something like Turok does but I'm still really not too happy to see it thrown in here. It's a hardcore economy simulation. Apparently it's used in colleges to give a crash course. Of course, being a college dropout that was never even interested in economics, I can neither confirm or deny that. It's a better choice than Turok 2 or Shopkeep 2, but not something that I can see myself sitting down with just for fun. It might be good if I get into a learning mood, but that kinda only comes around once in a blue moon. On top of that, it is complicated to jump into. I think the fact that it has real-world application is the only thing really saving it from me completely unloading on this fucking dinosaur. So what's the final tally? Five games I like, five games I hate, two games I kinda have mixed feelings about. It's a pretty even spread, all things considered. I suppose I will end up picking up this bundle mostly for Hitman 2, but then that leaves the question of which games to drop out of here. Hmm. I already own Opus Magnum, so that's one of them. But the other... I think it's definitely gotta be Shopkeep 2, without a doubt. I don't think I'll ever find myself playing Truber Brook, or Turok, or Capitalism 2, or Raiden, or Driftland, but, um, whatever. <laughs> Maybe one day when I'm dead and gone, my kids can boot them up and say, Wow, Dad had really shit taste in video games. <laughs> Additionally, if you buy the bundle this month, there's supposed to be, like, one mystery game that's coming on May 1st, which I think is kind of ironic, because they steered away from Humble Monthly because it was all mystery games, and now they're kind of throwing mystery games in to get more people to buy the Humble Choice. So maybe this marketing strategy is not working for them. And I'll tell you probably why it's not working for them, because you've just had shit months. Shit months in a row. I know people who have canceled for four or five months in a row, like, it doesn't take much to lure me in, considering the very low cost of entry, but the fact that you almost lost me this month is extremely telling. God, you guys need to step it up. It might also be a weak bundle because they gave it away to everybody who bought the, uh, COVID-19 bundle. We can't say COVID-19. Can we say COVID-19? We can't say any of those words because YouTube is going to demonetize this video if I do. So, um, I'll call it the... The Illness Bundle. You know, that worldwide illness that's going on right now. That bundle included a one-month subscription to Humble Choice. So that might be why it's a bit more shit than usual, but I thought you're trying to, like, lure people in and get more people to subscribe to this, and that's not the way to go about it. Like, hey, here's a bunch of crappy games you got for free. Great, I'll never play any of them. So what games did you guys drop out of here? Did you think that this bundle is absolutely as terrible as I do? <sighs> this is the weakest one I've seen in a long, long time. Humble's going downhill. 
I might have to start covering fanatical bundles pretty soon here. Let me know if you'd like to see some fanatical bundles. I, I guess I could test the waters with that. They just come out with so damn many of them. Which is a bit of a double-edged sword. Both for my channel and my pocketbook. <laughs> but anyways, friends, this has been Bundle Banter for the April 2020 Humble Choice Bundle. I do hope that you've enjoyed. I hope that you will like, comment, and or subscribe. Check out my links in the description, including a subscription link if you're new to Humble and you can kind of uh, magically send me a couple dollars when you sign up, which is always appreciated. As always, a big shout out to Nico the Legend for supporting us on Patreon currently. I will see you guys in the next one, which will probably be Temtem or Animal Crossing. But I hope you guys will join me over there. And if not, then I'll see you next month. And hopefully, hopefully things will start looking up. Once again, this has been the April Humble Choice. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. I shall see you in the next one. And until then, friends, bye-bye. Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friends.